Hey, John here. Well, working on the sprite video the other day, I noticed something that strongly suggests that there is a design uh, flaw with the implementation of the VDP. Now let's put an eyeball on the interrupt line and the read status line. Here's the interrupt pin. I guess I gotta ground my scope. And I'll fill the other probe on the read status pin, which is right next to it, right here. Now let's boot it up and run some code. Uh, here it is, as you might recognize, the bottom of our main sprite loop, the first draft of our game that we're going to evolve here. Remember it calls VDP weight at the bottom of the loop in order to synchronize itself to the vertical retrace time when each time the VDP finishes writing one uh, active display area. Okay. As soon as that's done, we as quickly as possible copy in all the data that we need to update the display for the next frame. So this happens uh, one, 60 times a second. So here's our screen. And you, uh, let's run the sprites program. Okay, so there you go, it's working. I move around my joystick and it does the usual thing, all right? So when that's happening, we're running in this loop down here. We spent a lot of time in this loop, actually. As we saw last time, we were looking at the uh, scope traces of what happens on the chip enable lines, right? For the reading and the writing. And if you recall, the yellow line at the bottom is the interrupt request pin coming out of the VDP. I do not have the jumper in the VDP. This is not actually causing the Z80 to receive any interrupts. We're simply looking at this on the scope so that we can see that the interrupt signal coming out of the VDP went active right there. And we can clearly see that the wait loop right here was pulling a thing to death, waiting for that thing to go on. So it knew that it was the time to return, you could say, from this subroutine here, and proceed to update the screen with the next batch of data. Now, I noticed when I was capturing the data here that once in a while, my scope didn't trigger right, or at least that's what I thought was happening. Like it missed one of these interrupt lines or something, and I, I, the, 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 uh, the read status looked weird. It didn't stop here, it just kept going. For example, here's one of those times, right? I, what I see here is I got a trigger down here. Obviously, there it is, the period of time. As you recall, when I'm uploading the data to the VDP to update it for the next frame, this is when it was reading the joystick values, deciding what the frame that would come next would be, and uh, filling in the memory and everything else, getting ready to upload it. Then during this period of time, as it's reading and reading and reading, just like I said before, waiting for the, uh, for the status register in the VDP, which is right here, to have its most significant bit set, which is explained right here. The F is set to the weight one at the end of the raster scan of the last line of the active display just before the backdrop color the screen begins. Their exact words. It is reset to a zero after the status register is read or whenever the VDP is externally reset, hardware reset, and so on. If the interrupt enable bit in the VDP register is one, then the VDP interrupt will also uh, be present on the output line int. And that's what my scope is on. And that's why, as you saw before, I uh, configured the VDP to turn that all on. So it needs to be read frame by frame in order to clear the interrupt and receive a new interrupt for the next time. Okay. It's supposed to reset it to zero after the register has been read. Okay. Well, I'm guessing it did that because the interrupt signal went on and it got reset. And I was clearly reading it. But I never saw that status bit 
go on. This is pretty cut and dry. There's not a mistake here. If I read the byte and I end it with 80 and it's zero, I'm not seeing that frame flag on. Go up and go again. Clearly, I can actually see it physically coming out of the interrupt pin on the VDP right there and being captured on my scope. Now, if I zoom way in on my scope, during the period of time when we saw the interrupt go on, while it's just reading away, this is what we see. I'm reading, presumably. I saw a zero, so I went around my loop down here, right? I read it again. I must have seen a zero because it comes right back around and it gets, uh, uh, and it reads it again. Meanwhile, between these two reads, the interrupt went on and it went back off. It clearly is, you know, one sixtieth of a second, one sixtieth of a second to here, another sixtieth, and so on. So these <laughs> three in a row, again, we can look closely. Bing, bing. There's one right there. It's kind of hitting in the uh, in the scope uh, grid there. Here's the one here. Yet it didn't report it back in the status register. And here's another one. So this, I mean, this is going to say sixty hertz, but it's not reporting it correctly. Otherwise, clearly, we would not have gone back and kept on reading. So what's happening here is most likely a design flaw in how the VDP is implemented. Arguably, what we've got here is the logic that is used to reset that flag in the interrupt output pin is receiving the I am now reading the you know the the, the status register now signal here and while uh, for a short period of time it is also trying to assert that signal as true so we've got probably some kind of a race condition in the way the gates inside the VDP are designed I submit that it is not possible to reliably implement a software polling scheme like this to synchronize yourself to the 60 hertz VDP interrupt signal. Now you might argue, well, it was designed to be used as an interrupt. If we wait until we get an interrupt, and then in our interrupt handler, we would then read the VDP flag, then this would never happen. It would always read it like over here. In fact, other than these reads over here that would not exist in the scenario where the only time you would read the status register would be when you're in an interrupt handler. You would have a situation that looks like this. It would have gone active, been active, and staying active while it's asserting the interrupt to the CPU. The CPU would go into its interrupt handler, and in there it would read it and say, hey, what's going on? At which point the flag bit would have been reset back to disable it, and you'd go on your merry way. Now, of course, you wouldn't need to read it at all, arguably, if you actually got an interrupt and your interrupt handler woke up and you, there's no other reason that you would get an interrupt from the device other than for the 60 hertz signal anyhow. Uh, but of course, you do have to read it in order to actually reset the interrupt request. Otherwise, your CPU will just spin and getting interrupts all the time. So you do have to read it. You absolutely, <laughs> it appears that you absolutely Never want to read it unless it's already asserted. Otherwise, this can happen, which is a problem because it asserts it, it deasserts it, and all the while I'm never told it was on in the first place. So, in this scenario, I cannot synchronize myself to that one single frame. You might argue, and so what? Once in a while, that can be a problem. But in reality, you know, a 60th of a second is actually a pretty long time. And if it stutters every now and then, it could disrupt your gameplay and your overall clock, you know, will lose time. If you're ticking along at 60 hertz, every time you get one of these and once in a while, you just throw one away. That's just wrong. And it's going to cause problems. 
even if they're just cosmetic game synchronization issues and stuff. I mean, that's just the, you know, whatever. That's, that's the sign of a really poorly designed application, poorly designed hardware. In this case, there's not a lot we can do to fix the actual chip. And I really wanted to make sure everybody saw this because this happens. I mean, this happens a lot, yeah, especially back in the 80s. You'd get chips all the time that just would not work. They're junk, and you have to work around whatever flaws they have. So let's say you really wanted to pull this. How in the world could you do this so that you don't have this problem? All right, so here is our bdp board right and our problem is that we're reading the status register while the vdp circuitry inside is transitioning the interrupt pin from its inactive state to active in other words it's going from high to low and what we really want to do is look at what's coming out of this interrupt pin before we ever actually read the status register. And what we would like to do is look at this interrupt pin and make sure that this is active, and then and only then read the status register. And never again, any other time, shall we ever try to read the status register because we could accidentally be reading it during that critical moment, okay? Well, there's a couple of different ways to do this. One way is to just put in the jumper, generate an interrupt, and do it in an interrupt handler. Okay, ultimately that I, that was my plan all along, and that would be one way out of it. But let's say you actually do want to pull this thing, and you don't want to use interrupts, because you know, as I mentioned before, one of the problems with the over the whole Z80 retro um, main board and the use of this interrupt line from the VDP is that if you want to use mode two interrupts from the CTC and the SIO that's on the on the retro board, and you also want to use this at the same time, you can't. Because this interrupt doesn't have an acknowledgments phase to go along with it. It's not going to work. The CTC and the SIO are really designed to run in mode two. Now you can either run this and not generate in or you know just don't enable any interrupts on the on the CTC or the SIO and then run the whole thing in mode 0 or mode 1 which would work okay here or as somebody pointed out don't connect it to int connect it to the non-maskable interrupt line if you do that non-maskable interrupts which is over here like on pin 17 which I didn't use in this design that always works in the same mode that int does when it's in like mode zero or mode one. In other words, it has a fixed handler. It's level sensitive and it doesn't have any acknowledgement handshaking. And I'm like, oh, darn. So if I ever come out with another rev of the actual board, I'll run that pin over here as well. So you could then jump it either to interrupt and disable all the interrupts from anything on the retro board itself, which I don't currently use in my BIOS anyway, or uh, you can jumper it over to the non-maskable interrupt and then have everything all going at once, which would be really cool. So if you're in interrupts one way or another, that way would be one way to take care of this problem and then only read it in your interrupt handler when you know it's safe to do so. If you want to do this with polling, there's another way to do this. Run your interrupt signal from the chip over to one of the unused input bits on these buffers over here. These I have wired up to read the joysticks. I got, you know, input 0, 2, 5, 6, and 7. Well, I'll get up to number 1 or 3 or 4, <laughs> right? These are not used anyway. If I run the interrupt signal over to one of these unused pins and I read this latch, I can take a peek at the interrupt line and then I can know that it is either set or not. And then when I see that it is set and it becomes zero, then I can read the status register from the VDP and I can then reset the interrupt signal and never have this happen. 
Now, I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw this, because if you're going to actually write an all polling based uh, VDP program, you know how to play around with sprites or something, trying to synchronize it, and you have this problem, uh, this is a misfeature, as we say, of the VDP. I'm absolutely certain that that's the case. This is not a flaw in the design of this logic here. It's not a flaw in the design of this VDP board. I'm absolutely certain that it's a flaw in how they dealt with synchronization of the CPU doing read operations on the status register and how that is synchronized to reset this frame flag. In other words, that is absolutely not true. <laughs> the flag frame flag bit in the status register is definitely not reset to zero after the status register has been read. Heck no. I suppose this point in time over here is after this point in time over here. <laughs> so, okay, it did get reset after it was read, but the frame flag value being true was never read, okay? We never saw it, and yet it was still reset, okay? I, it, it's annoying when this happens. It needs to have a synchronizer put into the circuit in the design of the VDP. I'm sure the designers either knew it a priori that this was a problem and let it go because it saved them money or something like that. Or they said, whoops-a-daisy, it's a mistake, but because it's related to generating interrupts, you should wait anyway until you get an interrupt and then rate it, like I said earlier. So, I mean, is it totally all for loss? No. Can you work around it in different ways? Yes. Uh, and we'll pick, we'll probably actually do both at some point. I'll uh, probably actually just run a little wire over to uh, the header on the retro uh, VDP board of one of these unused pins and use that technique when I, uh, I should say if and when I want to use the purely software only version of this. And the way that code would work at that time was I would be reading then from, you know, one of the joystick inputs instead of the VDP register, and I would have this same spin loop. And then only then when I see the interrupt signal go active from the hardwired jumper to the joystick input, would I then do an input over here on the VDP reg to read the actual register, resetting it for the next uh, 60th of a second delay. Thus, resulting in a perfectly synchronized 60 hertz update rate and presumably never have this happen again. Now, by now, I mean, it's been 35 years ish since these chips came out, I would think that there'd been some sort of an update or some people talking about this. I can't be the only one who has ever noticed this. <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, I didn't see it published anywhere. I did a quick Google on it, but there's, I mean, there's so many things. It's hard to Google for, you know, 9118 or the 9918 and, and you know, whatever. I, I didn't see it. Maybe uh, I Googled poorly. <laughs> Let me know if you know anything about this, if it's actually been released and published anywhere. I'd like to know. Throw your comments below on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.